Food for thought. How groceries are flown around the world. When you buy that bottle of chili and red, a can of Italian crushed tomatoes, or that leg of New Zealand spring lamb, do you ever think about how it got from there to here? Groceries are a big part of global supply chains. Now more than ever, airlines are a part of that chain. Here's a look at how airlines are helping get groceries from producers all around the world all the way to your dinner table. A typically small role for airlines. In usual times, airlines fly a small slice of overall groceries moving through global supply chains. One way to measure this is to use what are known as food miles. A food mile is a metric that calculates the distance each transport method covers, multiplied by the quantity of food transported. According to a 2018 article written in the magazine Science, air travel contributes to 0.16% of global food miles. In contrast, sea shipping generates 58.97% of global food miles, while road accounts for 30.97% and rail 9.9%. With airlines making such a small contribution to the movement of groceries around the world, you might ask, why talk about it? Well, two reasons. Firstly, 2020 has seen global supply chains upended. Secondly, airlines specialize in transporting a particular type of grocery. Supply chains disrupted in 2020. We all know what's happened this year. Thousands of flights got canceled, airlines were partially or fully grounded, Given that scheduled passenger flights also carry freight, that in itself has disrupted supply chains. But getting less attention is the disruption to global sea shipping. This part of the supply chain has suffered almost as much upset as airlines. However, people still have to eat. Airlines were quick to pounce on one of the few revenue streams remaining open to them, freight-only flights. That's seen airlines play a more significant role than usual in transporting groceries around the world. Earlier this month, in the United States, the FAA gave airlines permission to remove seats from their planes and operate freight-only flights. At the height of the travel downturn, with so many aircraft grounded, shippers were reportedly paying up to 1.5 million US dollars to lease aircraft for freight-only flights. However, rates have since dropped. On the other side of the world, Oman Air had at one point carried over 250,000 kilograms of groceries. One Airbus A330 flight alone flew 49,593 kilograms of fruit, vegetables and other perishable groceries to the Middle Eastern Sultanate. Earlier in this crisis, the Australian government had been working with the local fishing industry to operate emergency flights to transport seafood. Normally, these products are shipped on passenger aircraft, but with flights grounded, the fishing industry had no other options. In late March and early April, major fishing companies in Australia negotiated with several different airlines to deliver food products. Initially, the industry was considering flying the products from Australia to Japan and then onwards to China to avoid flight bans. We've been scrambling to try and find a solution to keep all of our people in a job and keep our boats on the water, a representative of the fishing industry said to the Australian Broadcasting Corporation. Then we can keep all of the important export earnings coming into the country, as well as maintaining supply to our customers. The Australian government then stepped in to examine the possibility of filling up returning empty aircraft with medical supplies. They made a plan to hire 40 aircraft to deliver these seafood products at a cost of 110 million Australian dollars, or 67.4 million US dollars. We recognise the current COVID-19 crisis is placing immense pressure on Australian exporters, many of whom felt the earliest and deepest aspects of the economic downturn, said Trade Minister Simon Birmingham in the Sydney Morning Herald. Getting our export sector back on its feet is crucial to reduce job losses through the crisis and a critical part of the ultimate economic recovery. The plan was to have planes from Melbourne, Sydney, Perth and Brisbane loaded with 800 million Australian dollars worth of lobsters and an additional 500 million Australian dollars worth of other products. The flights would then return with medical supplies from China. Necessary public health restrictions are already placing massive pressure on business viability and job security, continued the Trade Minister. We can't afford for our farmers, fishers and exporters to be under similar pressure just because they can't get their goods onto a plane. Airlines lay on additional dedicated freight services. Speaking of Australia, there's a small regional airport in the country that's building a reputation as an export hub. Wellcamp, a two-hour drive west of Brisbane, is seeing regular freighters come down from Asia. 
That includes Queensland's only dedicated Boeing 7478F international freighter service. Even with this, local grocery exporters say actual freight capacity falls well short of demand. Emirates has boosted its freight operations, including to far-flung destinations it doesn't typically fly dedicated freighter planes to. The Dubai-based airline is now operating four freight-only services a week to New Zealand. In the hold of the Boeings are chilled meats, honey, dairy products and seafood heading to the Middle East and Europe. Here's a video released by the airline showing its crews modifying a passenger Boeing 777 for cargo. We consider it our responsibility to ensure that we're able to facilitate the adequate supply of food and other essential commodities to markets that we serve, says Nabil Sultan, Emirates Divisional Senior Vice President for Cargo. Air transportation's strength in flying time-sensitive, perishable goods. When it comes to groceries, air freight shines with time-sensitive and perishable items. One of the unforeseen consequences of so many people stuck at home is a renewed interest in cooking and food. That helps to drive demand for unseasonal groceries of specific origins from various countries. When a famous celebrity chef does a show featuring banana blossoms from Thailand and lamb from New Zealand, that helps underpin the demand for the products. That in turn helps sustain the increased role airlines play in transporting groceries. While tin tomatoes can sit in a container on a dock for months, some groceries can't wait. Back in Australia, Singapore Airlines laid on special freight flights into Adelaide to get time-sensitive groceries out to export markets. On board the first A350-900 flight was 30 tonnes of seafood, lamb, poultry, eggs, cider and wine. Around 90% of our air freight usually goes out in the bellies of passenger aircraft, with very few international passenger flights leaving Australia at present, our exporters are facing major hurdles, says Australia's Trade Minister Simon Birmingham in a statement at the time. The demand for fresh groceries isn't slowing down. Despite the absence of regularly scheduled commercial flights, demand for fresh seafood and meat remains high in regions like Asia. At the other end of the supply chain, the producers cannot earn a living if they cannot export their goods. Freight services operated by airlines are the vital link. In Europe, perishable groceries are often flown in from the Middle East and African food bowl countries. Fresh beans come in from Kenya when they're out of season in Europe. During winter in the United Kingdom, heads of lettuce are flown in from Spain. Now you might say, that's appalling. We can grow them at home, in greenhouses, and reduce the food miles and carbon footprint. But it frequently turns out it's both economically cheaper and environmentally sounder to fly groceries in. Lettuce in a British winter need to be grown in artificially heated greenhouses. Doing so generates a bigger carbon footprint than buying field-grown lettuce flown in from Spain. Professor Gareth Edwards-Jones of Bangor University, an expert on African agriculture, says, Working out carbon footprints is horribly complicated. It's not just where something is grown and how far it has to travel, but also how it's grown, how it's stored, how it's prepared. Of those beans from Kenya, Professor Edwards Jones told The Guardian, they don't use tractors, they use cow muck as fertilizer, and they have low-tech irrigation systems in Kenya. They also provide employment to many people in the developing world. So you have to weigh that against the air miles used to get them to the supermarket. Groceries transported by air can be the better ethical choice. Quite possibly you've never considered the role air transportation plays in ethical eating, or if you have, you've assumed it's just as horrendous as eating small children. But as Edwards Jones says, transporting groceries by air can sometimes reduce the carbon footprint. It can also help drive developing nations forward and consume fewer food miles. Plus, fresh food tastes better. Why would you eat snap frozen beans when you can eat fresh? Why would you eat tuna frozen six months ago when there's an air freighted tuna steak in the fishmonger's window, not yet two days old? When we deliver food, we preserve its flavor. We're much more than just one of the world's largest cargo carriers. We are its most personal. The disruption to traditional global supply chains is putting a renewed focus on the role airlines play in it. It's also offering airlines new opportunities. The question is, as things slowly start to return to normal, can the airlines maintain the momentum they've recently built freighting groceries around the world?
Did you know that we publish over 175 stories every single week on simpleflying.com? Be sure to check the link in the description for more great stories just like this. Thanks for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe before you go.